Hello everyone, Crydax here. Welcome back to our Factorio Space Age playthrough. We are continuing to progress towards victory. Um, what did we do in our last episode? I think we got fusion researched and railguns researched, and now we're working towards that. Um, I have a couple more things to finish researching. Like a captive biter spawner, foundations, and a portable fusion reactor. And then at that point, we are then done. That's it. These are the last three researches of the tech tree that are not infinite researches. Wow. That feels crazy. Uh, and I'll start with a couple of those research. Just make everything cheaper. Um, okay, so then... We noticed that this was broken, which led us to the whole Gleba discovery. So now this is not automatically shooting. Interesting. Do I have to set? Why are these possible choices for target priorities? What on earth? And why are construction robots a choice, but not logistics robots? Yeah, I mean, I could see it being a PvP thing, but it feels very weird that logistics are missing. That was the main thing I noticed, other than the fact that they are a choice. Um, anyway, we need biter spawners and that. Will that make it work? Hmm. Am I doing something wrong? It's got the ammo. It's it's definitely got like this one in range and it's not shooting. Hmm. Something feels amiss. Do I have to hit K? I assume yeah, yeah, a lore I like I wonder if it's that. I assumed it would be smart enough to shoot capture robots automatically. So if I hit K, that doesn't do anything. Is that because I rebound it and it's telling me the wrong key? No, K is my rebound key. Um, yeah, there might not be an exception where I was hoping there was an exception. Yeah, I was wondering if maybe that button would un it would remove the tag of previously captured and it would go back to being a normal and then this would shoot it. But that doesn't seem to But I swear I was seeing people post about being able to recapture bases immediately if there were issues. I swear that was a thing. So how do you do it if not this? How do you unprotect a nest from automatic shooting? You can fire turrets manually. So you think I have to use a spider tron? Is that what you're saying? Mm. I feel like there should be a way to do this without spider trons. Oh well, I'll just run over there. Um, we're back on Navis at this point. I haven't made any spider trons yet. What do they actually cost? Would it would it be difficult for me to make one? Uh, no, not at all. I can easily make one. But at this point, I'm gonna be faster to get there. I still have no idea why Gleba broke. After 20 hours, that that is the the mystery. But I, I I just I have this gut feeling it had to do with running out of spoilage, but it, it might not have, and I might not have fixed it. Everything's still running. We definitely improved a few things. Like it could have been a bioflux issue. Like I wasn't making bioflux fast enough. So we've we've improved productivity of bioflux, Yumako mash, and jelly which will improve our capability to make bioflux and improve the amount of fuel 
that we're creating over here, right? In fact, we might have too much. No, I guess this one's still... Oh, you know, I just realized this needs to... There needs to be one here, the priority to the left. Um, but anyway, I, I think that means we have even less power issues. So I, I think we're fine, but I don't know. I'm still a little scared. After it goes wrong once, you know, once, once uh, burned, twice shy, they say. Okay, so you're telling me I gotta do this on purpose. I just hit space once and it fired three for that last shot. That was weird. I guess, is the fire rate like really high? I don't know, that was weird. I guess the shooting rate is four rockets a second. Um, okay, so we're, we're finally back to egg making. Oh, Alor, that's for sure true, but I'm already making rocket fuel out of it with a priority. So that's why, again, I don't think power was the issue at all. And we looked at the power graph and it that seemed to confirm I was correct. In the sense that the... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the power didn't go out until multiple hours after the nutrients stopped being crafted. So that heavily implies power was not an issue at all. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of make a better bot highway here. It will slightly improve the latency at which we get uh, eggs delivered. Because now there's more charging along their route. But really, the biggest upgrade would be another speed, which is 16,000 packs. That's starting to get expensive, even for my improved module setup and Biter Lab setup. That's still a lot. Because I still have, like, not that many packs being produced. I haven't improved, you know, red and, red and green and yellow and purple and all that. We still have a maximum here of 1 per second, it looks like. Or 1.2 per second. So, yeah, there's there's a lot. If I keep... Ugh, my back is killing me. Sorry, guys. Uh, if I keep going with this base, there's a lot that we would need to improve. All right. I have all the wrong windows open here. Okay, so goal number one is fusion power. So let's... Let's head over to Aquilo. Have I made the bio labs yet? Yes, yes. I have bio labs. I have Epic Prod 3 modules in them, so they're pretty dang, pretty dang productive. Um, all right. So what I'm wanting now is to make. Well, I guess for fusion, we need to make the the circuit circuity doodads. Circuity do dance, circuity day. Alright, um. Am I forgetting anything? Probably. Edia Fusion Reactor. No, I have tungsten and superconductors. And quantum processors need the things that I already have, so we should be. Should be good to go. So you head over to Aquilo. And then let's work on some circuit processing. So I don't love, I don't love what I've done with the place, do I? What? Oh, I disconnected some heat pipes there, I guess. Um. Where should I make the circuits? Where are 
have that. Probably somewhere in here. There we go. So I need blue chips, carbide, superconductors, carbon fiber. All of that is coming from space. So blue chips in space could be a thing that I do eventually. I mean, you need these from other planets no matter how you no matter how you bake it. So or do you? I just realized these don't need to be made on planet. Neither do these, but they need a biochamber and neither do these. So you do, I mean, it's easier though than transporting the ore, so you might as well make them on the planet. And it's the same thing here. It's easier to move superconductors rather than holmium plates. So. <laughs> Although, with stack size being 200, but it's two per holmium, I think 100 holmium is actually more dense than 200 superconductors. Especially with productivity, right? Because that's going to be an extra 100% productivity. So, exporting the holmium plates and then making superconductors on site is a denser, more effective solution. But then you also need copper, plastic, and oil, which, you know, makes it kind of a pain in the butt to do it that way. But if your whole goal was reducing planetary shipping, interplanetary shipping, holmium is better. Interesting. On that note, what about is holmium ore better than than holmium plates? Because that's going to give you 50 per stack. Stack size rocket capacity is exactly double for both. And let's see, two ore gets you enough for 100 solution. Which gets you enough for five plates. Am I am I reading that right? Two two ore gets you a hundred solution. And then there's productivity factored into that, right? So there's like you get a lot of let's just call it 150 solution. Because you can easily get 50% prod. And then And then 150 solution is seven and a half plates. So yeah, actually, holmium ore is the densest way to get superconductors somewhere. That's crazy. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought that that's true. Normally, the more you process a thing, the denser it gets. Now that is a good point, Aloy. I mean, none of this really really matters when it comes to. Rockets are basically free. <laughs> you know, you can put a thousand superconductors onto a ship for what is close to zero cost. So it kind of doesn't matter, but um, discounting the weight of every other ingredient. Yeah, mostly because you can make these in space or on other planets. In in most cases, obviously Aquila is a bit of an exception, but but like if your goal was to transport the fewest things to Aquilo, you would transport holmium ore and then make the plates here rather than transport the plates here. Um, that's all irrelevant because I'm not doing it that way. That's crazy. <laughs> Despite it being more efficient, that's crazy. That's not the kind of efficiency I care about. Imagine, imagine setting up more stuff on Aquilo than you have to. Imagine. Uh, on that note though, let's set up processing. I think I'm just gonna use bots for better or for worse. Um, maybe that's a mistake, but we're going to try it. And this needs... This is not the building. What do you make them in? Oh, EMPs. Look at that. Um, good thing we should have some in here, right? He says... No, a bit more. Oh, it's probably in the storage. Yeah, yeah, we got rares. We got rares. Okay, and they need the cold floral ketone, so I should probably put them over here so that we can just access the floral ketones pretty easily. 
Oh, it's a weird situation. Okay. Um, interesting. All right, we'll do it like that. Definitely want to put in the old epic prod threes, if I have enough. I don't. I should have more, though, on the ship. No, I don't have more on the ship. No! Um, Balderdash. All right, we'll drop some of the stuff that we need here. And we'll have to fly back, won't we? Drop a few more Lodgerbots, a few more uncommon Roboports. Why not? Some more inserters and substations. Oh yeah, pipes. We ran out of pipes. I'll forget that. Alright, um, that should be good enough for now. So we send you back. Hopefully we'll have enough. Oh, that! That's why I don't have Prod 3 modules, because we didn't have eggs. We didn't have biter eggs. But those should be back and running again. So these are all running again. Perfect. Perfect. Which is why we didn't have enough of these. Okay, got it. Now, do I have rares available? It looks like I do. Upgrading those to rare will speed up this process a smidge. A smidgen. What? Oh, we were attacked. We was attacked. Um, why still do manual loading and unloading? Um, I don't know. It's a good question. Because, like, I understand that you're you're right, but I also like it. And I don't know if I can explain why. So there's my unhelpful answer. Alright, uh, back to... Aquilo. Designing this. The cold ketones. And just do this. And then the not so cold ketones can do this. I guess it's probably better to just do. You know, one thing I haven't mentioned that I actually know, and I probably should have mentioned already you have to spend more heat on. Uh, defrosting uh, underground pipes than on straight pipes. So, if you use an underground where you don't need to, you've wasted some heat. Even even for the full length. Uh, it's like 150 heat per whatever, or kilowatts or something, versus a straight pipe is only 10. So you can get 15 straight pipes for the same amount of cost maintenance cost as one underground pair. So that being said, if there's a spot like this, you're better off using straight pipes. At the end of the day, I, I'm not worried too much about it. It's just I figured I'd point it out because I kind of forgot about it until just now. OK, so this is going to be filling up with all sorts of crap for a while. The question is, yeah, we need five more rare prod threes before it's going to grab them. Um, might take a minute. Uh, you can see that, yeah, you can see it in the prototype explorer here, but I got, there's a table someone made on Reddit that I was looking at. It's actually a lot of work to figure out the numbers from this, because it, whatever number it gives you is not very helpful. Yeah, heating energy 1666.67, but what does that actually mean? I don't know. Is that the amount per tick? Probably. And I assume that's just in joules. 
So it's 1.6 kilojoules per tick, which totals out to 100 kilowatts of heat energy. I think I'm doing that right. It's very possible. That's not quite it, but, but yeah. Um, also, LXNDR, Luxenderich, however you pronounce your name. Hello, hello to you as well. <laughs> Welcome from the YouTube side of things. I want to make these better, but I would need legendary quality threes, of which I only have, well, we have four there. Two more. I really need to, yeah, I don't know. Ah, there's so many things I need to fix if I want to make it better for legendary. Oh, we're already done with the research? Wow, I thought that would take longer. I thought the research we queued up was going to take, like, multiple episodes. That happened fast. Um... Okay, so railgun damage seems pretty cheap. There's no reason to not do a couple of those. And is railgun shooting speed still bugged? I know there was a bug with railgun shooting speed. Um, I hope they've fixed that by now. Gleba is missing a lamp, huh? Well, that's probably because I haven't created any lamps on Gleba. Let's fix that. Um, back to here. I'm gonna go the lazy route. Gonna be a good idea or not. Got twenty of everything. And four E. Copy, copy. that and then ah this is obnoxious um because what i would like to do get this going so then we're gonna have to go all the way around and we can throw some speed modules in there Boom. There we go. Quantum processors, baby. Uh, they stack to 200. No, 100. Um, so I'll probably do like this. And I actually am going to remove these for now because they're not fully productive. And that's a pretty big difference, right? This one is 145% prod. And these are much lower. Oh, interesting. It's showing quality as zero, even though I don't have any quality modules in effect. Is that new? That they display quality on the side, even if it's not affected? I realize the speed modules make them go negative, but I don't have any to counteract in the first place, and I feel like it wasn't showing you that before. The belt of mixed, stacked, and unstacked items. Yeah, it actually does look really cool. It's only because the recycling stuff is not, it's creating things that aren't stacked, and then those are just prioritized over the stacked items. So it ends up being a mixture. I could just put a stack inserter here to re restackify them, but the rates are so low it doesn't matter. If the rates were higher, I would, I would totally do it. Um, I do think the Synthus now is get okay, good, good, good. We are getting prod threes. Why only make 200? Uh, wait, 200 what? What am I making 200 of? I don't know. Oh, 2,000 you mean? Uh, cause that's 6,000 quantum processors, which feels like enough to buffer. Maybe I'm crazy.
but anywho, there's quantum processors. And now we want to make fusion-y stuff. So fusion-y stuff is made in the cryogenic plant. Maybe I'll make it over here. Okay, so how many do we need? On the face of it, it looks like you only need two each, 50 megawatt, but like neighbor bonuses change that, so. And the stack size is five to one. So that actually makes me feel And I assume we can't fraud these, right? Okay, just double check. Um, actually makes me feel like having the same number is fine. In a single fusion reactor, okay, so let's go with like five stacks. Heat arm. I don't think, since I can't do prod, there's not too much of a need to do anything here. Um, yeah, exactly. Two plus two per neighbor bonus, so. And you can have a lot more neighbors because of the way these work. Um, Alright. should get me there over time. It certainly is going to cause... Yeah, it's going to cause issues. I'm wondering if I can upgrade planner... Oh, of course, the upgrade planner is not... I've seen multiple people say this by now, and I think it's just completely true. I saw some really convincing arguments on Reddit. Convincing, not that I needed convincing because I already agreed with it, but I was like, oh yeah, that's a point, that's a good point that I hadn't even thought of. But just like, especially with how big remote view is now, blueprints should not go into your inventory by default. The only time they should end up in your inventory is if you are holding a blueprint and you place it in your inventory like that. All other cases, when you, when you copy something and put it in your hotbar and hit Q to like get it out of your hand, that should go into the game library at a minimum it should go into your library somewhere because now if i go into remote view i now can't it looks like i can use it but if i go to a different planet whichever one i just pasted it was uh where was it this one wait no that's not the one is this the one i just copied wait now it's letting me use it i'm super confused right now See, even I don't know. Oh, it's letting me use it because it's actually in my inventory. But then if I were to place that down and fly to a different planet, because you have to get rid of it to fly to a different planet, now I can't use it, even though it's right here. It's the weirdest thing, I, I think. I, I'm glad that blueprints are items that you can use. You need that for stuff like recursive blueprints. But I do think the default should be using the blueprint game blueprint library as, as where those things go because then you can use them in remote view the way you would expect to. Um, so like an upgrade planner here, I clearly made this, but then I didn't, like it ended up in my inventory, which I then dropped somewhere on another planet and now I can't use it anymore. So you have to like make a new one or copy it or, you know, go through something like that. Which just feels silly for an upgrade planner. It's like, I shouldn't need to physically carry with me the idea that I want to upgrade, <laughs> you know, it's just, I don't think it's uh, expected that you would need to carry it with you. Anyway, what am I actually doing? That was such a tangent. Um, no, it wasn't that. It was, sorry, it was uh, robo ports. That's what I'm actually doing. And see now, I don't even know where it is right now. Did I see that ended up in my in my inventory because I didn't manually pick it up and put it in here. 
even though I never once interacted with my inventory. You know what I mean? Like, like I was in remote view when I made this, but it ended up in my character's inventory, which is a double weirdness, I think. So, I mean, I think it's just artifacts of how the game used to be. So it, it totally all makes sense. I just think now that remote view is such a big deal, I think they could they could really improve the experience by just making the, the blueprint library the norm for everything. And most of the time, these things don't end up in your inventory. All right, so that should help the bots a little bit as well to have all of these be uncommon. Um, I assume we're running out of, yeah, tungsten plates pretty quick here. All right, so... And we're out of holmium, it seems. What's up with that? Agora, are you... It could be annoying for multiplayer, but that's more a question of whether blueprint libraries should be um, shared between players or or not. You know, like there should be a, a my blueprints and a like this maps blueprints. And I don't actually even know how any of that works, but. Because right now, what is it? Yeah, there's a my and a game. So, so then, sorry, th then the default should be that they go into my blueprints. I was thinking game blueprints because that way they're not always showing up in your forever library. But there's not a my game blueprints category, <laughs> which is more what I was thinking it would be. Um, so yeah, I mean, of course there's maybe some issues with multiplayer, but I do think with now remote view and you have to ditch your inventory to go to another planet, you end up having weirdnesses like, okay, why can't I click this? And I do think that's a bit odd. Now, why am I not getting Holmium plates? Um, I have a crap ton of rare Holmium plates, apparently. So what's, what's going on here? Because we even have foundries making holmium now so it's all getting requested it's all going to making electromagnetic plants and i have basically none wow they are expensive i do i do see that but so i guess what we need You're only going to run... Well, I, maybe I do it this way. You only run if Holmium... Greater than, like... 3,000. So I want... I want Holmium to go to... Stockpiling Holmium first. Um, do we have the better prod modules? No, I've never dropped better prod modules. If I time it right, I could drop them from here. Alright, uh, so now we drop these, and we drop more tungsten. But yeah, I, I, should, I should automate this in through this point. Uh, let's see. Get these all placed. Alright, so we'll do 2,000 of those. 2,000 of these. Thousand of all the things. We'll do three thousand because that's rocket part related. Uh, we want LDS one thousand rocket fuel. We're out of rocket fuel. That's okay. 
I'm making rocket fuel. No, I'm not making rocket fuel here yet. That's another step that I haven't done. I'm making solid fuel. Um, else, and these, splitties. I probably don't need more than a hundred straight belts. It's ridiculous because you use underground so often. See, this, you guys were wondering why I hadn't done this yet. It's because this is a pain in the butt. That's why. <laughs> That's the simple answer. It's it's not hard. It's just you've got to click a lot of things and decide what it is you want to request. You can do it only once, but I feel that you often have different desires between each planet, so then you have to mo- Ah, not 2,000. Uh, then you have to modify each planet. Anyway. It certainly is less of a pain in the butt over the long term. But, you know, laziness often prioritizes short-term gains over long-term gains, so... And then you run into issues with like the module thing where it's like, I don't want necessarily 50 of each rarity and you can't just do the any rarity. Or can you now? Did they make it so we can now? Did that patch changed something? No, you can still trash, you can only trash any quality. But you can't request any quality. Or of a range of qualities, I should say. I can't, I still can't do that. Aloy, that only works if you're using like buffer chests though. Where you're like, cause you need, you need some sort of constant amount that your network wants. Um, also, I'm gonna run out of space here. Storage. Yeah, yeah, it'll it'll read if buildings are needed to be built or whatever, but it's not going to like Uh well space platforms will, but But yeah, Jan, regarding the blueprint book thing that you were mentioning, yes, I agree. It's easier to just manage it from the library. Why are these not going into the trash slot if I control click them? I guess that's just not how it works. I don't know. I don't want ice in here, though. That's what I know. Um... Okay. So then the Synthus should now have some sort of inactivity. Uh, we'll go with 25 seconds. And we'll just do that. And now this will come back as soon as it's done nothing for a minute. And I think that'll be close enough to what we, we want. Uh, the Vulcanus. Let's see, that's the Derpa Moo, right? How many tungsten plates are we requesting on this bad boy? Only 500? Yeah, that should go up. And then on Vulcanus, 
I assume we're not having any issue keeping up with those requests. Yeah, we have. Tungsten. Yeah, it has one little spurt of needing to make stuff that does not take very long. And then it's done. Okay, so I could certainly request more is what that means. I could probably even do 2,000 on, on the on each of them, actually. Just means more rockets sent, but that's fine. Wait, what's the best fuel, Wicked Instincts? Um, I mean, I think nuclear fuel. I, I assume you mean fuel for, like, trains or something. Wow! I have 3,900 depleted uranium cells. I need to start recycling those bad boys. That's a lot. Jeez. Um, yet, it is not even close to mattering because I still have infinite uranium. But, but yeah, I think, I think nuclear fuel is still the best fuel as far as, like, train fuel. As far as I know. There's no fusion burnable fuel. So. And then when you go really high quality, you get 475% vehicle acceleration. And 137% top speed. So that acceleration is insane. I'm really curious like how fast a train goes from zero to 100 with that. That's really nuts. Um, all right, anyway, what are we doing? Fusion? Fusion. All right, so what else do we need to make fusion power a reality? So fusion, fusion cells need holmium, lithium, and ammonia. Wow, that's so cheap. That's like weirdly cheap. Hmm. I'll take it though. Um, and what was that made in? Also, am I? Oh. Uh, ooh. I don't like that. The back button doesn't open your previously opened item. It actually exits out of the Factoriopedia. I assume if you have something open and you close it and then you hit like the back button hotkey, it opens it. <sighs> yeah. That <sighs> there's just some UI weirdnesses where I'm like it makes sense but I don't like it. And, and I feel like there's a lot of those little things. I wonder if I wonder if some of it is just what other games have conditioned me to, to prefer, or if it's like a, the devs. The devs are really good at programming consistent things, but sometimes that makes the UI kind of not do what you hope it does. Or maybe it's just like you're expecting it to work like how other programs work. I'm not sure, but like the old, like what Rygard made, uh, uh, factory what's it called recipe book um you know you would be able to see the previous page that you had open in here without it wait what what is happening so you open it and that goes to closing it but here if you close it then it will go back properly? What? I don't even know what I'm doing, but something's wrong here. Something's really weird here. Anyway, um, what I'm trying to do before I got distracted by that weirdness of the back button is see what I make this in. Cryogenic plant, okay. So we'll just do the same thing here. Copy this. I'm to do that. Delete the requests. Fusion cell. I assume I can productivity e this. Yes. And I also need to fill these, these bad boys up. I know that's not quite the same amount, but it's close enough. 130% is pretty good. And it looks like we've already got a good amount of reactors. Oh, 
I guess I don't need that last little piece. I do, I know I do for the building. <laughs> it makes and uses legendary rocket fuel on the basis of might as well. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, that would be exactly how it would be for me. I have zero need for uh, faster trains at this point. I mean, to be honest, really nobody does. Especially now that we have, um, what's it called? Uh, well, between train interrupts, but the word I'm looking for is elevated rails. We now have so much more throughput of trains already, just because of better intersections, you know, non-intersecting intersections. So having even faster trains is more just for fun than anything else. But, uh, yeah, that's gonna make things not work, isn't it? There we go. Oh, that's not fast. I guess we did slow the building down to, like, crawl. Let's see, that goes there. Uh, you know, I almost wish for a ghost inventory. Um, that would be kind of nice. So, like, you could have your inventory over here, and it's not actually an inventory with any real items stored in it, but it's a self-curated and ordered list. You know, kind of like when you have an inventory, it's like, these are the things I want to have on me. And you could have the same idea for remote view and you open your inventory and it's like, these are the things I want on me, not just a full list of every single possible item I can make. I think that would actually be really handy. Uh, that would be nice. And obviously you have your hot bars down here, but that's a much more limited set of items. You know, even with four bars, you've only got 40, 40 buttons. Um, but let's throw that in there. And then that should be plenty of fusion power cells. We'll let this build up to 500, why not? True, Waskily, I think the issue there isn't so much the faster trains though, it's the it's the uh the train uh cargo size. It feels like the cargo size of trains is really small now with the speed of everything. Like the trains are going really fast and the inserters are inserting really fast. Um the train just can't hold very much. Comparatively. Uh I think this is good. 40 gigajoules, that's a lot. How much is a nuclear one? 8 gigajoules? You do only make one per recipe here, I guess. That is different. Um, is lithium my holdup? What's going on here? Oh, the request was made when it was really slow. There we go. Yeah, they didn't make wagons hold more, which... Again, it's like a lot of people would have expected that, so clearly they intentionally made that decision for balance reasons. All right, that's more fusion power cells than I would need to power literally everything in the entire solar system right now. That's a lot. I mean, even Ignoring neighbor bonuses, this is enough for about 80 gigawatts. <laughs> or I guess 70 gigawatts. And Navis is my power hungriest planet, and it's tracking at one. One gigawatt. So I think we've got enough fusion fuel. Cool. I will request a fusion. Maybe two. Not 2E. <laughs> um, and I will request eight of these because they each need four if I've got a double. And then I will request fusion power cells 100. Why not? 
Yeah. Hey, thanks for the follow, Shililog. Now, why are we not making more of these? Tungsten? Yeah. Always the tungsten. And I'm guessing the Synthus doesn't even have any right now. Yeah, it's got zero. Derpamu is struggling. shouldn't be requesting that anymore. That's pointless. Um, it's just taking time. No, something's off. Something is off. It's loaded. It's not launching. Ah, ship full. That that would do it. That would do it. Good point. Just make sure we don't run out of power there. Now they should be getting launched. There we go. Or... Well, I didn't really mean to do that, but okay. I was going to say, or if you have 10 minutes of inactivity, you should head back no matter what. Maybe even five minutes. Does anyone know the launch speed of rockets? Like, if one pad was launching, you know, it kept launching rockets in a row, how, how many seconds is it between launches? That is an irrational amount of fusion? No, no, Dave. No, no. An irrational amount of fusion would be square root two. That's an irrational amount of fusion. A hundred is a very rational amount. <laughs> I think fusion lasts even longer than nuclear on the basis that not only is each cell five times more power, but fusion is self-throttling, so it doesn't just burn through the whole fusion cell as fast as it can. Oh, two, you're talking about 2E being irrational. Yes, you're right, 2E would be irrational. I was thinking like 2e5, like scientific notation, not like e the number e. It's floating point, so it's rational by definition. Ah, uh, nerds, we have fun. All right, uh, anyway, what's the hold up on these? Still the tungsten, that's lithium though. Why am I not making more lithium? Something's, oh! Oh. Sure. We stopped collecting lithium for some odd reason. Okay, there we go. Cool, so we got fusion power. Do real guns take power? Or are they just, are they like turrets where they just shoot based on their own you know, whatever. They do take power. Okay. I mean, I could just look at the thing. I keep struggling to get to Factoriopedia. Uh, Railgun turret consumes seven megawatts. Wow. Okay. And do we need to make this? No, we can make this anywhere. So I'm best, I'm probably best off Hmm. 
to decide if I just want to make real guns. I might as well just make real guns on. I don't think I'm going to go for the higher quality real guns right now. So I might as well make them on Aquilo. Since I've already got all the stuff right here for it. Um, super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Yeah, it wouldn't hurt if I had quality modules. The problem is I don't think I've put any quality modules on Aquilo. That makes that kind of impossible. Oh, I need fluoroketones. I did not register that. All right, I should make it over here then. Maybe even like right here, just for simplicity. I could make my own railgun, but that just seems dangerous. <laughs> That's more likely to result in the destruction of my own property <laughs> than anything that actually needs to be killed. some big requests. Alright, and we stack to... 10? Oh, the rocket capacity is only 1. I guess that's the reason to not make them on here. Though, then again, that's like more than one rocket full of other stuff anyway. But yeah, eight module slots with quality module threes would be some serious chances to get uncommons. I mean, what are we talking? What, what do I have? I have epic threes. So that would be eight times... Yeah, it's like almost a 40% chance. Then he'd occasionally lag out and die. Yeah, I mean... It does seem like the amount of damage they do is pretty insane. 18,000 damage. I mean, I was I was doing pretty good. Though, actually, this is not that... I don't have that many upgrades yet, I guess, is the difference. And the difference is the range. Because the uranium shells... 12,000 physical. These are 18,000 physical with only two upgrades. But you can, these are in turrets. You can't have cannon turrets, right? You can only have a single tank firing. So it's pretty different. I also find it interesting that it doesn't tell you the piercing power. I guess it's just infinite. Railguns have infinite piercing power, right? So that's gonna be dealing that damage to every section of the worm, which is nuts. And then when you think about, oh, they're not worms. Sorry, Demolisher. Um, but this is for the head. I wonder what the... I wonder what the resistance is of the, the segments. Um, are there any worms within radar that I can look at? The segments have 5 slash 50%. Okay, so it's the same. They also have 50% physical resistance. So yeah, like if a single railgun shot were to hit like five sections at once, you know, bow to stern, okay, it might one shot the thing, you know, cause 18,000 damage is just reduced down to 9,000 damage. So if it hit four segments, that would insta gib a small demolisher in one shot. What's up Spiplet? Thank you so much for the four months. Very appreciated. Okay, I feel like I'm trying to juggle a lot of things right now with all these space platforms. How's the Derpamu doing? The Derpamu's doing okay. 30 seconds of inactivity and 600 seconds pass. See, I don't want that. I don't want that. The reason we were doing that was because it was going too fast back and forth and was getting damaged. Which is certainly still possible. 
that that happens. It's less likely now because of asteroid productivity, I think. Now that we have some asteroid productivity going on, that means we'll get more iron. Because I think the issue was iron plates. I don't know. But yeah, we'll just do 30 seconds of inactivity and, and call it a day. Because that seems to be a good amount. That, like, the planet has stopped requesting things if we have 30 seconds go by. Uh-oh. Hmm, I feel like something's wrong. What? What is... Oh... Uh... It's requesting calcite as I'm consuming it. That's interesting. So maybe instead, maybe I gave it one minute. drop things down to the planet. I'm curious how... Yeah, that's an interesting... There's no way to measure if the planet's gotten everything at once. If all planetary requests are satisfied. Interesting. So this one should be okay, though, because it's not dropping stuff down to Vulcanus constantly. You have an idea for your mod? Space platform split? So you can use a platform as a tugboat. Interesting. That could be cool, yeah, not having... Like, you could have one platform that does the engines and the weapons, and another platform is just a processing platform. I know another thing a lot of people have been asking for is the ability to transfer items between platforms if they're around the same planet, which I think could also be cool. Okay, so... Health. Do these have 400? These are do oh my god, look at that damage. Each one of these turrets has dealt 700,000 damage. Ooh, that ooh, that one on the end? Whoa, 3.6 million? 3.6 million damage, 17,000 kills. Anyway, they're doing 33.8 physical damage. So then... What I'm thinking is I do another one of these researches. And that maybe means I need even less... Even less ammo. We can track it, but we can see the ammo production over time. Maybe better would even be the consumption over time. I guess they're the same number in this case. Um, yeah, no, you can do interrupts, but interrupts are different than, than this. Because interrupts are going to, like, that's different than a wait condition. Because I, I want it to be at the, once it's at the planet, I want it to wait until it's satisfied the requests of the planet, and then go. But it's not going to. It can make a wait condition. Hmm. Middle grabber not working? Oh. Uh, no, it's it's working. It's just full. I have way too many asteroid chunks is the problem. So 
Teams are actually running into some slight power issues. Uh, let's do more of all these things. Um, but yeah, I guess I actually need. Faster. It would also be better if I had stack inserters. Why don't I request stack inserters? From, uh, I guess we can go. Either or. And then we can make things a little better. Yeah, you can run routes entirely on interrupts. I guess that's true. I did know that. Um, okay, here is another attack. Attack on Gleba. What have we done? We've got fusion power. It should be... Should be ready to go. I mean... I don't need fusion power here, but... Synthus... Now can drop down... Fusion power... And fusion cells. Perfect. And then we also need railgun turret. Ten? Is that too many? No, let's do ten. Maybe even more. Maybe even fifteen. Maybe twenty. Alright, so let's set up some fusion power just for fun. Fusion. Reactor. Now... Oh. Whoops. Uh, we're gonna need to make and... Or make some barrels and barrel some of the cold... The cold stuff here. Let's see. Barreling, barrel making, request steel, provide barrels. Long inserter between. Barrel. This is our first barreling of the entire playthrough, which I find interesting. Um, and then the Synthus, we're going to request Luoro Ketone Cold, 100, what's the rocket amount? 100, okay. Is that enough? Should be. A barrel of laughs, yeah. Look like things are going okay here. I just need more than four rocket pads if I wanted that to go any faster. But what is that? That's four rockets, that's ten rockets. 
calcite's kind of the big deal. And then that is 250. That's eight rockets. That's 22 rockets plus whatever else I needed. That's a decent amount. It's going to take two and a half minutes or whatever if it's about 30 seconds a rocket. All right, so fusion power. Let's investigate. So we've got the fusion reactor. And then we've got the fusion generators, which have all sorts of little, little weird connections. So basically, the cold fluoroketone comes in. It gets turned into plasma, and then the plasma is consumed, and then that gives out the hot fluoroketone, which is not the same amount. Ah. So it actually does consume. Consume. It doesn't, like, you, you will run out. Um... It's not a closed loop. Did, did I do that wrong? Oh, no, sorry. I'm just... I was seeing four and two, and that's where I got confused. Um, but these consume two plasma, and never mind. It is a closed loop. Okay. I, yeah, I was actually confused by that for a second. So then you can do stuff like this, where you, like, keep the plasma going, and then you're bringing out the stuff. So yeah, making a tileable reactor is, I guess, half the fun here. Now, these are directional, right? Like, I can't do that and the plasma won't flow there. Now you guys are confusing me. I think it is a closed loop. This consumes four fluoro and generates four plasma. This consumes two plasma and outputs two fluoro. So, no, that is a closed loop. Uh, Waskly, that is what closed loop means. I mean, yeah, you have to cool it between the two, but that's still a closed loop. Like, you don't need any any fluoroketone from outside the system. You do need cooling in the system, yes. But that that's still a closed loop. Uh, speaking of, though, we do need cryogenic plant requested. Oh, did I? I think that's another thing I didn't put on the synthus. Let's do that. Okay, and inactivity here is a problem again because... We'll do all requests satisfied and time passed. Or 25 seconds of inactivity. Either of those should mean that we're good to go. Does some get lost in the cooling plant? Uh, no, no, it's 10 to 10. It's the same recipe that we're already doing. Whoa, what is going on here? Oh, storage. Um, it's the same recipe we're doing right here. This one. It's 10 to 10, and no productivity allowed. So, that should be fine. Ooh, we got rail guns. Uh, and then the ammo we can make pretty much anywhere. That's easy. All right, fun, 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 fun. All right, uh, so then we're gonna need some initial unbarreling just to get things spun up. And then Leba, would you stop being such a problem child? Cryo 
plants will get here eventually. So yeah, the reason these are cool, uh, for those who never read that FFF, they they get the neighbor bonuses, but they don't tile. I mean, you can just tile them boring like this. Um, but you can fit extra neighbors around them and they pass the plasma through. So you could have one that's totally surrounded. Well, no, you need to feed it with fuel. So I guess you still can't have it totally surrounded. But you can have it like that and have a neighbor bonus of five, right? Which is crazy. Um, I think the simplest version is like this because then you get a neighbor bonus of two on all of them. I'm just gonna go with the basic neighbor bonus of one. And then each one should have four. Well, each one. Uh oh, wait. Each one now needs four generators. Am I doing that right? Uh, let's see. With the neighbor bonus. These normally each need two, so yeah, now they'll each need four. So, I could just do something like this. And then... I don't want to, like, turn it like that. No, that's ugly. Hmm, four is kind of an unfortunate number. Three works nicely, but four is kind of... I guess I can do... Two and then two, like this. It's a really long, long boy design, though. I don't know if I like that. Maybe I rotate these, and then I put the... The junk in from the side, and then it will look a little better. And where'd they go? Hey there. Uh, so then we can do eight total. One, two. Three, four. Five, six. And then we've got that collecting those three, these two. Yeah, this is this is kind of like just the way the shapes are. I, I really like how many ways there are going to be to do this. I'm sure there will be certain optimized designs uh, that this is not, but it is pretty cool. little power pole in there and that's gonna be fusion power but not yet because we're still gonna need one more trip wait no we do have oh now this is not requesting any of these things <sighs> there's so many steps it would help if I had a group assigned that would save me a step here because we want cryo plants, we need fluoro ro ketone cold barrels. We need fusion plants. How did I have some in my inventory then? I'm actually starting to get confused. What happened here? Did I? Oh, I dropped them down manually. That's what happened here. Um. That's what explains that. Uh, I think that's it, right? Oh, and the fusion cells. Okay.
Yeah, it is interesting that you don't really want to use fusion on the very planet you get it on. Because you need the heat already, and at that point, it's really easy to just use heat for power. So it doesn't feel like there's that much of a point to use fusion unless you were really, really power hungry, and then it might be worth it. But it's like we're powering our base just on this solid fuel alone. I don't even know the last time we consumed some fusion or fission. What are they called? Uranium fuel cells? Yeah, I mean, over the last hour, we haven't even really consumed any. I think those got created or those got consumed only when I made a bunch of new heat pipes and then it sucks the heat out of the network fast enough. <laughs> counterpoint, fusion is cool. I will, I will accept that counterpoint. Might as well throw some power cells in there. So how long does one of these run at full tilt? 100 megawatts compared to 40,000 megajoules is going to be 40,000, drop a zero, 400 seconds. Okay. So these are 400 seconds apiece. Um... That's only if you're using all the power. <laughs> Overbuilding plus bot base on Aquilo. I guess if you're using bots for everything, that might need fusion power. Because the, they're going to be pretty power hungry if that's your main idea. So what's going on right now? I should stop... Requesting rocket fuel, maybe. Or I should start making rocket fuel on Aqua. That would save some. That save some time now. change that a little bit so we go to Fulgora more often um, yeah. uh, how's Fulgora on the Holmium now that we've put that condition okay good we have Holmium beautiful Oh, Sean, I forgot about the numbers, too, for, like, requesting. Like, you can make a smaller logistics group for what you're requesting onto the platform, but then have the planet not have the exact same numbers with a multiplier. That is an interesting way to do it. I hadn't thought about that. Gleba, Gleba, Gleba. I'd like to see an attack happen, I'm curious. It looks like they're mostly from these directions, because those bases are in the in the fog. More lasers does help too. I mean, I again, lasers aren't like the highest damaging things, but they do still do a lot of damage, even if 80% of it is blocked. What are my upgrades at? Can't see anything over there. Uh, their damage is 122 still. I can make the Tesla turrets, but aren't those only on Fulgora? Oh, no, 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 but they need the supercapacitors, which I have not exported supercapacitors anywhere. So they're effectively only on Fulgora for me right now. It is an effective restriction, but not an absolute. All right, so anyway, the Synthus is currently heading back to Aquilo. Should 
Should be getting some rail guns soon. I think I want to do another rocket parts. That seems nice to get a little bit more of that. Just build a big ass wall. Walls don't work. Now the question, I guess that's not true. How many tiles of wall do you need before <laughs> the pentapods cannot step over it? Um, there's a number somewhere, I presume. If your wall is thick enough, you get a real thick boy, the pentapods are gonna have to stop. Unless they can just, or maybe they can't, maybe they can just walk on top of walls to the point where like they would just walk through a hundred tiles of walls. Um, landfill works to prevent them from spawning, but it's not like a moat or anything. Okay, yeah, we already got plenty of fusion power cells. And a lamp. Ta-da. Well, I don't... It's a different kind of moat, I guess, but yes. You, if you if you landfill your entire pollution cloud on Glaba, then you don't have to deal with enemies. That is true. All right, did we get the ketones? We did. All right, so then you get rid of those. Cryo plants, we have a couple. Perfect. I don't know how many I need. I'm guessing I can speed it up pretty well to make this not need to be a bunch. I'll leave room for some modules here. Fusion power! Alright, that's a perfect place, I think, to end the YouTube episode. We are going to keep streaming, though, so don't worry. But, man, look at that. It's beautiful. So... Uh, so, target temperature, max output. You can see the neighbor bonus is... being changed based on the speed at which they are running, which is super interesting. Right now they're running at about one-fourth. These are going to consume, these are going to make 50 megawatts regardless of what the neighbor bonuses are doing. So the neighbor bonus is changing It's changing the plasma temperature. Oh, and these are consuming a different rate of plasma. Like if it's hotter plasma, they consume less of it, I think. Because this is stuff it with more neighbor bonus, this is stuffing more power, aka more temperature, into the same amount of fluid per second which means that these have to consume less per second to produce the 50 megawatts. I see. Okay, and then these are doing the cooling, um, which... Turn that back to normal. Uh, make it go quite a bit faster. Yeah, I mean, 24, yeah, yeah, those are fast enough for, like, almost infinite fusion power already. Yeah, I mean, it's the same as how steam works. 
when you have modded I've played plenty of mods where like steam can be at different temperatures and the uh, the turbines will consume less of a hotter steam or at least that's how most of them work some of them consume the max all the time but a lot of times the hotter it is the less it needs to consume per second to reach its wattage that it's trying to make so this right here at maximum is going to provide if they're both running at full it's going to provide 400 megawatts in this amount of space and I would say plus this but this is like those consume eight at most so each of these could handle three whole sets of this so like the actual amount of cryo plant you need is like a third of this or less um, There's no guarantee that the generators draw plasma from the reactors evenly. Well, they should. I mean, in this case, they're not because we don't have the same amount. But if you have all of the fusion generators on the same network, they should all run exactly the same percentage because they're connected. It would only be if you had different generators connected to different networks that you would run into that issue, I think. Or or like in my case where I haven't finished building the network. Because this one's going to run out sooner because it has more generators drawing the plasma. But yeah, sweet. Fusion power. Alright, we'll call that an episode there. As always, for those of you watching from the future, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments, and we'll see you all in the next one.